everyone. Back to another great episode of Rapid Reviews Radio. We are on episode 8. I can't believe it. I am your co-host Kylie Wild. I'm joined with Pete Beckett and a very Hello. special guest. Uh, Ooh, Dr. A very Virtual. Special guest. Yes. <laughs> Say hello. Hello, minions. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a fabulous show in store for you. It is a, a new dynamic. There's three of us here. Uh, <laughs> so this will be this will be fun. But um, so yep. um, how are you guys this week? I'll let you take that one, Doc. Oh, how am I doing? Oh, well, I'm doing really well. Went to the gym, had some good food. Yeah. Man has been gaming. Um, man has been reading some retro gaming stuff. Um, ah, so the doctor is good, you know, apple a day, that kind of thing. Nice, nice, <laughs> excellent. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I am doing very well, Kylie. I had a, uh, a very busy weekend away, but I am... Um, I haven't played any more Pokemon, so I'm refreshed. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yes, so so temper's not flaring, just nice and calm. <laughs> I I am calm this week. How are um, you doing? I am doing great. I have played all weekend on the Outer Worlds. <laughs> uh, for anyone marking that bingo cue, we've already <laughs> there. We've already got one. First so. space filled. <laughs> and uh, I... Got- Oh yes, uh, Kylie mentions that. out of wild, out of world, a yeah. lot. <laughs> Both of them. He's a bit of a fan of Bethesda. We oh Bethesda oh. like. <laughs> no, bit of a fan of Obsidian. <laughs> That's true, yes. but I said I said Bethesda like games as well. Yes. Oh yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> uh, yeah. yes. and I've, I've discovered that uh, the reason why after eight weeks I'm still playing the Outer Worlds is I am literally. And turning, overturning every secret and collecting every collectible, and also collectibles they are not official. <laughs> hmm. Well, that's uh, this is probably going to be the most in-depth review that we've probably got there, apart from Little Town Hero, because oh that gosh, was yeah, yeah, man, that that was that... a mammoth one. Twenty-five minute read for anyone who wanted to I read the long say, version. Yeah, go go read that. Go check the website, uh, which we'll give yeah. later, but. Yeah, if you want to read about Little Town Hero, we've got an excellent review of Yes, we have. Now, shall we get to the news? I think we should. This has been a bit of a light week, I'm afraid, so uh, the news might be a little sparse. I have included a little news story for a bit of a laugh later, so we'll get to that in a minute. But first piece of news that we've got is that an excellent, excellent, amazingly great game... Rayman Legends is currently yes. available for free on the Epic Games Store. Yes, that is nice. amazing. Yes. Uh, we all don't like the Epic Games Store, but go and get it just for that game. For it's that. free. Yeah. It's free! Who likes free? <laughs> Everyone likes free. Rayman and free. Two good words in one sentence. <laughs> yeah, we'll just take the Ubisoft out of that oh, so that we gosh. don't have to mention them. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> But to be fair, they did put out a very good game that actually included a lot of the Origins levels as well that were remade with that careful. game. I have to be careful. An Ubisoft communications manager just followed me on Twitter. So. Uh, okay. Um, so to, <laughs> to anyone out there who might have any negative review or anything negative to say about Ubisoft, please don't, because we love Ubisoft. Yes. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't support that. <laughs> uh, I think they probably heard what I said on uh, on the insomnia. Uh, oh, is that when you were mentioning yeah. about Ghost Recon Break uh, Breakpoint? Yes. The only game that was in Insomnia <laughs> Dublin. Yes. I still... A game convention that literally only had one game. One game. One playable game. Yeah. How do you feel about that, Doc? Would you be really annoyed if you went to somewhere that only had one playable game? Oh, I guess it depends on what kind of game it is. But if it's a game that I'm not really too interested in, then I would be frustrated. Yeah. 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 It was gro- it was Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Breakpoint. So yeah, not many people were very interested in that. Rid of that game the very week I actually purchased it, so I oh. would not be too thrilled to play that game. Yeah, it yeah. was the understandable. Yeah, 
the tent was virtually empty. So <laughs> there was no line. Mm. And yet you still didn't want to didn't want a queue to play it. I couldn't. I just couldn't make myself go in. I was just like, no, I just can't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wouldn't have done either because I had that EGX and I just refused to go anywhere near it. Yeah. No. Look, I, I watched The Punisher. That's all the John Burnfall I need. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But we'll move on from this uh, epic game store discussion. This, And we will talk <laughs> about the is the biggest news story of the week. Yes. Which happens to be that a, uh, a Twitter user by the name of Alcoholicost... That is a wicked name. That to is be really cool. Mm. I'm glad you pronounced that because it did not click with me until you just said it, and that is freaking awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it just reminds me of Metallica for some reason. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I al guess so. Alcoholica. Ah, uh, yes. Oh. Yeah. If you didn't know, um, basically there was a an image that went round back in '84 for Metallica where they had a banner that basically was just renamed the name of the band to Alcoholica. <laughs> Because they love drinking. And who doesn't? <laughs> There's your music fact for this week. <laughs> That's for our new music podcast, which will be coming uh, soon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's another new podcast idea we've had. We've now got eight, at least. Oh, definitely. See, we, we're, yeah. we're, we're set for life. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. What is that? The political one? The music one? The gaming one? The comic book uh, one? Uh, yeah. Right, Doc, do you want to join us on our comic book club podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to if I'm allowed to, if I'm nerdy enough. Oh. You're, ner you're nerdy enough. Yeah, you, oh. your okay. name is Dr. Virtual, you win. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nerdy. getting back to it. Yes. Basically, this uh, Twitter user has posted a picture of the PS5 dev kit, which has actually confirmed that the... Uh, pattern was correct and the design of the box did look like the Starship Enterprise it kind of looks like to me the um, the engine in the uh, Back to the Future car the DeLorean oh, what, the flux capacitor? yes the flux capacitor that's what it looks like oh, to it, me. Does, it does actually I didn't really <laughs> put that two and two together actually yeah good um, observation but mm. yeah, if you haven't seen it, definitely go search it up. It is um, interesting. <laughs> yes, it's a weird design, but we all know that this is not what it's going to be like at retail. Yeah. But there was an interesting theme to it is that there was a picture of the controller actually posted with it too. Yes. <laughs> so what do you guys think of this? Do you think this is just a PS4 controller or a slightly modified PS4 controller to accurately reflect what may be on the mm. PS5. It looks to me to be a little bit extend, like a little wider, um, which would be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but the thing is, I've stated this in an earlier podcast. For me, the PlayStation controller is probably one of the best designed. So I'm kind of glad to see that they haven't strayed far from the design if that's in fact what they've done yeah we don't know mm. for sure whether this is actually the case whether this is a final design or, or not but yeah. um we are both big fans of what the dual shock controller mm. is usually like except for the ps3 yes <laughs> 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 that that groan of disdain yeah. tells me everything we need to know <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But you know what I find it interesting? Um, it looks like there's an onboard display. And I do uh, wonder if that's going to carry yeah. over to the, the final build. Uh, what, on the dev kit itself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, if it's going to be... Uh, yeah, because there's a... or It looks very much like an onboard display. Yeah, it does, and I'm not sure if that'll carry over, but that could have something to do with the SSD that's in there. Mm -hmm. That would be very interesting. So, uh, it is also, I mean, it's not available on the PS4 dev kit that is behind it. Right, exactly. Uh, that's but... exactly what I'm going off of, yeah. Yeah, so we'll, we'll 
do is we'll post this image up on our Twitter after this goes live so that you guys can have a look at it yourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure some of you have pretty much already seen this anyway out there, but uh, th these these pictures have been doing the rounds for quite a long time. It's just the fact that the uh, the controller is a very interesting prospect there because there's been a lot of design documents come out that have have stated that that, that touchpad on there could be like it could have its own little screen on it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I so like to see that happen. Uh, yeah, I'd be curious to see how that works. Yeah, yeah. true. <laughs> it would be like the uh, yeah. the Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I i say that i was actually i did actually quite like the wii u it was quite an underrated console but, yeah the, but, um, the, the only thing i didn't care for about the wii u is the loading times um because i just don't think they had it. yeah they didn't have strong enough hardware in there but uh yeah Sure. But I mean, it's obviously the precursor to the Switch, so, you know, it's... Yeah, absolutely, I agree with that completely. But, yeah, you can really see sort of what, what was going on with that one there, because of obviously um, what they were thinking with, like, everything going on into that. Mm -hmm. um, the portability, the uh, second screen functionality and all that sort of thing was is definitely the tester for what the Switch was due to be yeah absolutely how do you feel about the wii u buddy it's yeah as you say i do believe it's a, an underrated you know console because um the wii u kind of like a little expanded what the wii gave us in terms of its games and um i can understand why people would have thought no oh, wii u you know but because um it's competition what was it? Was it the uh, PS4 and Xbox One, was it? Uh, yeah, it was towards the back end of the 360 yeah. and the PS3 into when the PS4 and the Xbox One came out. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's a family-friendly, for, for the most part, with its games. Uh, I like that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, focusing on a different aspect of uh, gameplay style, which was more fun-related or something out of the open, out of yeah. the ordinary, so to speak. I enjoy that kind of thing. Uh, I've got a Wii U myself, and I still need to pick up on many of the games. Um, but yeah, from what I played of the Wii U, I thoroughly enjoyed it, most of the games, actually. Yeah. I think a lot of the games on there were highly underrated. Um, some of them, obviously, having Switch ports now have increased the life of it. I think mm -hmm. Mario mm -hmm. Kart 8 was probably the best Mario Kart out there that, obviously, now has been surpassed by Deluxe, obviously. Mm -hmm. But you know, a lot of the games like Tropical Freeze came out onto oh, the Switch yeah. because it was such a, a brilliant game that too many people just didn't get the chance to actually play because the console was very much undersold at thirteen odd million. Yeah. yeah. Lifetime sales, which is as absolutely That's... horrendous. Yeah, especially for Nintendo. Oh yeah. Like how can you get away with selling thirteen million units like That's... in your entire lifetime worldwide? Yeah. Yeah. And considering the the Switch pretty much absolutely destroyed Ooh. that in the first year <laughs> of market. Yeah. <laughs> like I was gonna say like the first six months. <laughs> yeah, it pretty much did. And to give context to this, Smash Brothers Ultimate has sold more than the Wii U. Yeah, that's crazy. What in what, in a video game has sold more? Is, yeah, a video game has sold more physical sales than an actual console. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane, right? It is. It very much is. I thought it would have been um, the opposite. No. The Wii U was a bit of a disaster, unfortunately. Mm. Which is a shame because it has so many good games to it. But we sort of sidetracked again. Yeah. We do this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Just but follow along. How do you... We'll lead you somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll meet, lead you down the merry road. <laughs> We're off to see the wizard. Uh, wait, so I'm just going to get some final thoughts on this. What do you make of this whole console or this dev kit itself? Well, I do like the um, the the design reminds me of a future Avengers building with a lot of windows, but. Uh 
from what <laughs> I from what I heard about the PlayStation Five, if it's backwards compatible, um, probably that's what my thoughts on probably with the PS Four controller, what look what looks like a PS Four controller. Um, yeah, I agree. It does pretty much look like a PS4 controller, but Kylie, you are right. I'm looking at it now, and those handles do look a bit fatter, yeah. don't they? Yeah. 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 Mm. They're looking extra thick. <laughs> thick, thick, thick. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I, yeah, it's it's like uh, obviously you know we grew up in times where video game consoles were very much varied in their design. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, from one another, very distinct, and I yeah I'll give it points for being distinct looking. If this is going to be the final product, it's I don't different. know if this will be the final design at all. Mm. Uh, as, like I said, as you can see behind it, there are the PS4 and the PS4 Pro dev kits behind it, and they definitely don't look anything like the ugly PS4. No, I'm sitting here looking <laughs> no, at mine. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean they they look even more ugly. I don't, I don't know. I mean. They're two different colors, and so I don't like that. But yeah, definitely not. I'm not like not the... one for two tone. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 not for consoles. Yeah. Is it those I, things? I actually did hear an interesting fact about these uh, dev kits. Hmm? Oh. It's the reason why they are shaped like that. Oh. The reason why they are shaped like that is so that they can be stacked on top of each other without actually oh. dis- uh, ruining the airflow. Right. Hmm. Ah, oh, that makes. Which sense. I thought was really interesting. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. So they'll be venting That's... out the sides when they do the final product, I bet. And out the front and, and out the, the back top and... And... <laughs> and the bottom and uh... pretty much everywhere. Yeah. There's vents for days. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So we're gonna move on to our next story. I'm gonna give you a warning here. This is not a video game story, but it is a game story. So we spoke about this quickly, but I didn't tell the other two what the story is. So for raw reactions, please go and check your discords now. Okay, checking now. Okay. So click to uncover the spoiler that I've posted. What? (laughs) What? What is that? That's not real. (laughs) <laughs> no. It is very real. Are you having a laugh? That's no. <laughs> Might as well read it so the listeners know. But oh my god! Yes, I I will read you the headline that comes from Polygon, so you know this is kind of true. It, and it is game related, so I'll allow. Yeah. <laughs> so we all know the game Uno. Yes. Yeah. They have had video games, so that's, that's our true. little that's testament true. here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Uno removes red and blue cards to try to keep politics out of games. <laughs> that can't be real. It cannot be real. Yeah, oh, it, oh, it is real. It How, is so very be, real. <laughs> is this going to be green and yellow? What, but that's political. Exactly. They didn't think about the Green Party, the Libertarian Party, and all that lot. Yeah. And <laughs> and for context, there you go. I've just posted the link inside the Discord for you to... Uno? No! <laughs> I forgot about No red about or blue video. cards means no taking sides? The point of Uno is to crush your enemy and to take away their hopes and dreams at the last second. <laughs> I love how you impassioned you've got about this, Kylie. This is hilarious. Uno is one of my favorite games because I win all the time. Why would they do that? Those colors are wrong. Because I will just say, look, green represents like also like very political things globally. I am in the mm-hmm. island of Ireland and. Orange yep. on the island of Ireland also represents some very political things. And I'm sure purple means something somewhere and yellow somewhere else. So oh. you can't politicize colors. Oh, apparently you can. That's because so... they have done over here, including the Conservatives and Labour and UKIP no. and now Yellow and 
So we won't go into that because there's too much politics uh, being spoken about enough. I will say this. Listen up, people of our generation. Please go get in power now. (laughs) And in the ridiculousness that we have been forced to endure. (laughs) Yeah. Well... Okay, so if you if you want someone in office that you can trust, that you can believe in, that will have a very strong stance against stupid stuff like this, uh, vote Pete Beckett for for prime minister. <laughs> I'm not legally allowed to vote here yet, but you have my illegal vote. <laughs> Look, I'll take can- can- campaign contribution. Ah, uh, yes. So long as they're under a uh, hundred pounds, I think. <laughs> Oh. I will. I will honestly use that money for campaigning purposes only, and I, uh, I, 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 I'm definitely a politician because that was a lie. Yes, I was going to say. <laughs> what, what does beer go under your campaign finances? <laughs> yeah, straight in my pocket. <laughs> it helps you make decisions. <laughs> it, it, it does. It's your this advisor. Is what they call... <laughs> yeah. Look, this is what they call um, uh, ex- the expense scandal. Yep, see, you've already, you're have you a professional politician. You've already got scandals and everything. Too right. Ah. I, I think my Twitter run earlier on at someone pro- oh. might have caused a scandal, to be fair, but I'm not going to mention that again because yeah. that was kind of stupid. Twitter is, is, is fun for, for having discussions. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think that's going to do it for Sunday news, but I thought that was just too priceless not to include. You realize I have to follow that up with the you got this segment. <laughs> We've had a good laugh about it. That's <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. Um, and yes, uh, as we move on to the next segment, um, which is generally a unicorn chaser at this point. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's about a two minute, it's supposed to be two minutes. It's never lasted two minutes. Uh, It's never two minutes. (laughs) A moment where uh, we call it, a segment we call You Got This, where we kind of sit and reflect on the, well, I was going to say reflect on the week ahead, but if it's ahead, it's not a reflection. Um, (laughs) Fair point, fair point. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So this week's topic is happiness. Um, it's uh, well, we could all do a bit of happiness, we could especially all do with like, happiness. Yes. Uh, some of the stuff that's been going on a lot. And I used to use Uno for my happy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> now you have to use nonpartisan Uno. Nonpartisan for Uno. Oh my gosh. No, uh, happiness is is an interesting uh, thing in that we're all searching for it, and it eludes us at every turn at some point um but really what it comes down to is happiness isn't something that you can find um it's something that you create uh and i mean it's probably easy to say that when uh you know you're like me and your first world country and I can, you know, go to my fridge and it's full of food. I can turn on the heat. I can play video games. Um, yeah, so, so long as you've sold enough products this month. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because I'm not very happy when I don't sell enough. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it, I know that it does kind of sound flippant or easy or whatever. But really and truly, happiness has to come within. Um, because we've seen it in even, um, you know, famous athletes. Uh, they'll have the whole world delivered to them. They've, they've got, you know, a million chances out there. They've got money. They've got connections. And some of them will tell you straight up, I'm not happy. I had to have therapy because I'm not happy. And um, that just kind of shows you that happiness is something you've got to create. Um, Agreed. Yeah, and that can come from anything. If reading um, a comic book makes you happy go buy the comic book 
Um, well, buy all the comic books. <laughs> yeah, be like us and buy all of them. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, if, you know, if sitting and reflecting on just, you know, if you're a thinker and, and you overthink, but you but that brings you joy and happiness, don't feel guilty about that. Do that. Indulge in something like that that would make you happy. And then your happiness will come from within, and then it will start to bleed into other parts of your life. Um, yeah, it does. I mean, yeah. if you can't find the happiness and the joy in, in yourself, then where can you find it in the world? It's going to exactly. be nearly or mm. next to impossible to do so. Absolutely. So whether it, like you said, whether it be reading a comic book, um, some of the people are on the site really enjoy writing and, and mm -hmm. drawing, and that's their their place of happiness, and that's why they they came and joined rapid joined rapid reviews. You know, uh, that was something that they had wanted to do for a long time, and it made them happy to be able to actually play some good games and then talk about them in a a, mm. a very decent and productive way. And mm. that, that's actually a good point. Um, we do have a lot of, you know, artists and writers, and because their art and their writing make them happy, it by extension makes us happy to read and see it. So happiness and it, spreads it, like a virus. And then it makes it does. And it makes those people who come to the site regularly happy to read. Yes, and exactly. find out a little bit more about the people who are contributing towards it. Yep. Mm. So, so we have to ask you, Doc, what makes you happy? Well. Um, I never really usually think about what makes me happy. Um, cause I don't really ask for much. So the less, in, in a way, the less I have, the more happy I am because I'm really content with what I've got. Ooh, so that's, that's the way to be. I do mm. like. I, like I do have like you know a child of my own. He mm. he's just he's just the biggest blessing of my life. Aww. Um, so awesome. I've, I know I'm. I'm so. I have such a weakness for that. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um i've got small things I, I think happiness for me is when i see myself progress and excel at things that i either never thought i could do or never thought i could actually achieve and when i get that i like to feel yes i'm yeah. happy and proud of progression that i make in my life that whether it's small or big you know about me taking steps to overcome stuff like fear or mm -hmm. criticism or things like that you know it's always small things that can have a big effect on people you know but these little hurdles i found that i've grown happier when i'm just being myself just excelling at things that i love to do i love to be like the person i want to be it's yeah. small things like that you know of course and i'm glad you touched on it there as well because you said the uh the happiness and the pride and the mm -hmm. sense of accomplishment mm. those are very very key things in which we should aim to live you know yes. if you've got a goal in mind then that's going to be achieved through lots of hard work and lots of dedication you know and it's, you should feel proud of yourself when you actually do put that effort in and you should feel happy yeah. that that has gone out to people and that's something that they may or may not enjoy it's not to everyone's taste of course but mm -hmm. you know so long as you can be happy in yourself then you are definitely yes. one step closer to having a more fulfilled life yeah i Absolutely. agree yeah 100 percent. so you got this <laughs> yep that's how we end that section usually just a you got this and yeah. remember mm. we are here for you yes. so if you need us our dms are open yes Me and kylie yeah absolutely give, give us a message if you need it yep so We'll move on to the next to our topic, which is why we have the main man, Doctor Virtual, here, because we are going to ask him a few questions because <laughs> we want you to introduce you. Okay. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, a little bit about myself. Well, <laughs> oh, I remember these kind of questions for interviews. Um... <laughs> now the tables are turned. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've got our own back on you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, a little bit about myself. I guess I could start off with my personality. Um, my personality pretty much revolves around me being kind, uh, generous. I'm forgiving. I'm humble. And pretty much good positives. I'm no saint, of course. I've got my downfalls. But my, my outlook on life is pretty much just to try and help people, help themselves. Always want to be the one that's 
that can inspire people to do good. You know, I like that. I'm a gamer. I, I love my science fiction. I love my comics. I love my books. I love adventuring out. Love meeting different people, getting to know others, making friends, like putting people first. You know, so I, can, yeah. I feel like I can just be like that sort of little positive, tiny spark in the world that can just change many things for many people, even if yeah. it's in a small or positive in a big way. Yeah. We so need more people out there who yes. are going to be a bit more positive because there's a lot of negativity out in the world a lot of times. Uh, yeah. And it puts it puts into stock, obviously, the uh, the events to which what happened over the last week in London, yes. which yes. Uh, my heart goes say, out our, to those, those to people. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to give you a little bit of an insight into that, I could have been there when that happened. I was an hour away from that. It's, oh. Oh, it's nasty to oh, think yes. that I could have been involved in that. But yeah. um, fair play to the person who grabbed a narwhal tusk and started <laughs> attacking someone with it. Yeah. Oh, so good, but um, but I ha I have to I have to echo uh, Pete and say that we do need that uh, that light in the world, the spark. Yes, yeah. especially mm. to balance out my terrible heavy cynicism. <laughs> oh yeah, you're uh, you're heavy cynic just like me. Uh, I mean, I, I believe that we're all in a, in our own little way. We have our own air of cynicism about us, but yeah. it's the way in which you do it is the complete yes. difference in which what you know how it comes about, whether it's through text or through uh, voice or whatever mm -hmm. way. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, Doctor Virtual, you mentioned about video games, which is why we are here. Yeah. So, uh, tell me. I, I already know the answer to this question because I'm a, I'm a very big fan of your channel because you yeah. are a YouTuber. We're not, we haven't just pulled a random over off the street, I can guarantee you that. I was going to say, a random doctor <laughs> off the street. He's, he's not actually a doctor, like Dr. What? Mario. I can't believe it. My world has been shaken. <laughs> Next, you're going to tell me he's not virtual. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're in the virtual sphere, so yes, ah, he is actually. Okay, yeah. cool. Ah. No. Um, when did you start your YouTube channel and what is predominantly your main content on there? My, um, my f main Dr. Virtual channel, I believe I started around about 2013. Ooh, OG. Wow, yeah. Um, but that's not the longest I've been on YouTube. I started on YouTube in 2009. Wow. Oh, get out of town. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Jumped oh, on so. early. <laughs> yeah, really so we're OG. I'm like oh. an OG of the YouTube uh, content creators. Um, so my channel is predominantly about gaming, but I've trying to mix it up a bit with gaming, media, music, and a little few playlists of how how I'm gonna, you know, sections of my videos and how they're gonna come out with my content wise. I like to be a bit more creative creative of my content as opposed to being just stuck on one sort of small thing yeah um, yeah. I, I, yeah. I noticed a lot of uh i'm a frequent youtube viewer um, and <laughs> i've noticed a lot of channels um starting to do kind of a multimedia uh rather than just yeah let's say let's players they're now branching out um, yeah. into other areas yeah, it's good to diversify, I think, mm -hmm. anyway, rather than just sticking to too. one niche audio so you can uh, grow your listen uh, your viewer base or your listenership based mm -hmm. around that fact. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Is, would you say that is why you merged your multimedia channel and your gaming channels into one to create one sort of unified place? Yes. Um, it's like I've got other interests besides gaming and I've... And I'm not really one of those wooden type YouTubers who just has uh, one dimensional personality. I mm -hmm. like to venture yes. into all different paths that I find interesting. So Good. many yeah. many of my videos may consist of reviews or Wednesday, Wednesday Day or things <laughs> yeah. like that. I thought, you know, get a bit creative, a bit, you know, creational with the words. And I might have something called the We Kens. And, oh, uh, nice! Puns. I love puns. Like puns, puns, puns. Oh, the... <laughs> you, got, you, you definitely got the puns for days. Oh, <laughs> puns for weekends. And <laughs> it's. I think when I thought, okay, have it all on one account because having two accounts was pretty much an overload for me. So I thought, 
have it all in one so all my f- audience is focused in just that one account so they don't have to miss out on everything so people that love to watch movies i talk about that people don't watch comic books i'm yet to talk about things like that or things that are appealing to me i'm mm-hmm. gonna bring to the account but i want to do it in such a way that's entertaining that's got good audience retention that can get a good laugh a few jokes yeah. as i said in my about page my my humor is not meant to be offensive i don't really i know where to draw the line when it comes to jokes and stuff because mm-hmm. uh, i don't mean to offend anyone and if i do it's by completely accidental purposes um mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm really that careful i mean uh, what's that word i'm really considerate when it comes to other people's beliefs and um themselves yeah. of what they've gone through in their life so but yeah. I do like to have thrown your jokes here and there, you know, yeah. not too dark, but that's the thing about jokes, they're very subjectional what you find funny. Yeah, but... yeah exactly. Like, oh. we, we've definitely found over the last few years that uh, jokes can offend, but they're never meant to offend. Right. Yeah. Uh, offense is, all, is never given, only taken. Yeah. 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 Unless you're actually actively going out Unless to you're... offend someone with a joke. Complete yeah. jerk wide and... <laughs> Yeah, so I'm glad that you mentioned about jokes here because you've had a couple of uh, choice jokey things to say about one Brie Larson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you have done a fair few videos on Captain Marvel, which I find really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have to ask, I think I know the answer, but what's your beef with Captain Marvel? Uh, I don't really have much of a beef with Captain Marvel. Um, I think... With my video I made on <laughs> Captain Marvel being the first MCU movie of uh, movie to start with, yeah, um, yeah. being it's not even my most favorite. I've got to do my top list with my worst to best. Um, but I don't really have much of a beef with uh, Brie Larson or Captain Marvel. Um, it's just I just wanted to throw some jokes into the mix. I wanted to spice up my um, account or my content. I think I just like having a laugh. Yeah, I just love having a laugh. I love making people. Some people just don't get it on the internet. I'm afraid. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is very yeah, true. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, my my co-host Kylie will tell you that Americans do not get sarcasm no. at all. No, they do not. <laughs> and that is not a sarcastic remark. That is that is a actual factual. True uh, an thing. actual fact. An actual factual. <laughs> wow, you've got a new saying. <laughs> I'm going to have to use that more. <laughs> uh, we are short on the sarcasm, unfortunately. Not me. I'm special. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but Americans uh, as, a, as a whole tend to uh, not to grasp sarcasm. And so as a whole tend to be um, quite offended when no offense is meant. If that makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you... Have you ever had that where um, somebody in the comments of your videos has ever been, has gone, oh, I I don't like this video, like, you're just being mean for the sake of being mean, or anything like that? <sighs> well, uh, <laughs> uh, yes. well, I've been looking up, venturing through my old comments, and um, I remember a few comments regarding the PS4 video I made, uh, is um, that it just is that um based on the fact that you actually call it the fail station i call it that just for, <laughs> uh, for... yeah i think it was that what well, people did not like that because i've got a few comments about it but that's just me again having a laugh. i've got all yeah. sorts of taglines for all sorts of souls i just call it that i don't mean it in a harsh manner i mean it in a jokey manner but uh, it's just me saying the console just wasn't up to my gaming needs that's all yeah. I was trying to say, but some people just take it a little bit too far out of context. Yeah, um, I would agree. I, I think you start to get into toxic fandom uh, when it yeah. comes to certain things like that. Actually, I would say probably everything that you uh, you cover has a toxic fandom to it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And there's no reasoning with yeah. those people ever. <laughs> no. There's you no can't reason ever there. Re- <laughs> No, you can't reason with someone who doesn't want to listen to that sort of thing, who just wants to be toxic for the sake of it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, I would imagine that you probably get a fair few comments of the toxic nature because you are actually a person of colour. Yeah. How... I want to ask this. Um, 
how how do you how how has that affected has that been an effect uh on your you know your channel or anything like that have you you know been targeted or singled out or or anything um i haven't really been singled out in terms of me being black um i've just mostly been let's have a look it's one of those things where obviously i know i'm as an adult i'm fully aware not everyone's going to agree with you on things that you right. believe in or say about video games or this and that subject but that doesn't mean to say that that automatically should invite problems or people just going way overboard yes because some people just can't take it for some reason you know it's that's the thing about opinions they differ you're going to have your critics yeah you're mm -hmm. going to have people who don't like it i mean i i recently made a video about my stance on modern gaming i said in a video i don't really much like them but at the same time i don't hate them and i'm not attacking them mm -hmm. they just don't really suit my gaming needs as much as the old school retro games does for me right and i got told i'm gonna someone's gonna make a video response on it and some people could only understand small but it's okay i understand you know have a discussion but i haven't really been targeted heavily or too much out of context with things i've said in terms of my viewpoint, opinions, or things like that, at least not just yet. I do believe that has a fundamental th fact to do with that I'm not exactly that big of a YouTuber just yet. I'm pretty sure if I did get higher views and higher subscribers, then, you know, the more well-known you get, then you're going to get those people. Yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah, even, you know, the one I usually fall back on is... Uh, uh, Jack Septicai, <laughs> but even oh, he yeah. uh, he gets you know he gets his own set of abuse. You know, it's just you you reach a level of of popularity, I guess, and people don't like to see other people do well, and yeah. so then yeah. they it's say terrible things. Yeah, especially that ninja, that blue haired fool. <laughs> no, I'm I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I felt, I felt like being hyperbolic there. <laughs> But, I, I mean, that's a good like example, ninja, though. But, you know, no, I don't I, like Ninja. I'm not but, a fan I mean, of Ninja he's, at all. But he's not my kind of content creator, right, which is completely right. understandable. He's I, more for 12 and 13-year-old kids. Yes, yeah. and I would never go to his, you know, he's not on Twitch anymore, but the Xbox. Mixer. Mixer. Sorry. I'd never go on his Mixer channel and say, you blue-haired freak, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm not going to say the word that is frequently thrown around yeah. on uh, on Twitter, but one of the, it does involve the word lib and a, a and a kind of slur. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's just leave it at that. I'm sure uh, most people will be able to discern what I mean from there. Yeah, yeah. but um, yeah. I I don't understand. I guess uh, we've kind of talked about this before. How like um, as we were coming up, trolling was fun it was done kind of tongue-in-cheek it was done to kind of tweak you know people but without maliciousness behind it um mm. and nowadays yep. it seems like it's just vicious and malicious and it's just not it's i don't know i don't i can't understand that uh way of thinking that that i can't put mm. my mind there if that makes sense no i no. i can't either but I think a lot of it may have to do with the rise of Reddit. Oh, well. Mm. So, on our next podcast, which is the Reddit, the Reddit fan cast. <laughs> uh, no, a lot of us who've been long-term fans of Reddit probably know that once Reddit was brought over, things changed and... It, Reddit is is Reddit is not what it used to be. <laughs> no, it um, definitely isn't. It's heavily censored now, and maybe by you know maybe by association, when once they censored Reddit, the mm -hmm. antagonistic trolls had nowhere nowhere to vent, so they went. They all went on 4chan. Yeah, well, 4chan and then the the Reddit clone that I've now forgotten. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, but maybe they spread out, uh, you know, into the, the, the internet sphere and, uh, yeah, 
if you want a really good Reddit subreddit to look at that is quite toxic but very in jest and funny, mm -hmm. check out r slash roast me. Oh yes, yes, yes. Oh yes. Jesus, yes. this is. I showed yes. Doc. I showed this to you when I came to visit you earlier in the year, and yeah. you were absolutely cracking up with yes. some of these yes. comments, weren't you? I was indeed. It's so good because <laughs> those those people willingly put themselves out there. They're not, you know, it's yeah. Not they like, have to consent to it. They actually, have to. Yes. They are there. And uh, yeah, I love that. And the it's... am am I hot? That's another one I love. <laughs> oh gosh, there... <laughs> there is a subreddit that I follow that I can't mention by name on here because it is a little bit rude. Yes, is... I have one too, and I. <laughs> Yeah, it's, um, it's pictures of things that look like the what they shouldn't be, basically. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm a frequent follower of such things. <laughs> yeah, let's let's just say without saying the actual word, it's mm -hmm. don't put your pee pee in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a very funny subreddit to be fair. Uh, yeah, yep, yep. Um, mm. But we but... we've veered slightly off topic <laughs> again. <so. laughs> Um, Welcome to our podcast. <laughs> so I wanted to ask, what was it that made you want to actually join YouTube? Well, it was very early on. So this, I was in my late teens. So it's, I wanted to be part of something that I wanted to capture some happy memories because I heard about this video site and it was YouTube, and I thought, hmm. Yeah. You know, because at the time there was MySpace and Bebo, and I thought, oh, oh, oh blimey. Oh, my oh. gosh. I <laughs> actually have Bebo past. somewhere. <laughs> yes. It's what, um, one of our uh, mine and Doc's uh, mutual friends had a Bebo for a very long time that oh she um, he still gets a lot of stick for. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, oh, geez. So, go on. Yeah, we slightly veered oh, off there. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, I thought, okay, I'll just stick to what I know is gaming. And I just, at the time, I um, I didn't have any PC. I didn't have you no know, capture card. All I had was a mobile phone, a really old oh, one wow, at yeah. this point. Ah, oh, the classics of uh, <laughs> pinning the old mobile phone to the wall so that you can just point it <laughs> yeah, at the TV. It. <laughs> or, like, if you're older than that, the old point the camcorder at the TV oh, and get yeah. those scan lines. Oh, goodness. <laughs> That's the one. And it was all that. <laughs> and I feel like I wanted to just do it for a bit of fun. And yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe because I didn't choose it for gaming, I think the very first video I actually uploaded ever was me doing a montage of my football club at the time oh wow uh, which we're not going to mention by name because they're yeah. rubbish <laughs> yeah, because they're not doing too bad <laughs> <laughs> um and i thought okay i could get into this because i think part of me that wanted to start youtube at the very first glimpse of a thought was to do filmmaking mm -hmm. okay and That's um fun. but then it because I didn't have nothing to work with, I could only use my 240 potato um, yes. thing phone. Yep, the and... old 240p at least. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, okay. And then it started. I started to record with me and my friends, and um, record more of, our, of us playing games together. I thought, okay, I'm enjoying this. Then I started to become a commentator on games I played. I thought, okay, go back to a bit more. Go back to the games I played as a kid. I loved it. Then I continued. It continued. Then I thought. Okay, that was my niche on YouTube. It was for many years, and until I f within very recent years, which was on this most amazing account I've made for myself now, Dr. Virtual, um, it was not until this year-ish I did a revamp, and I thought, you know what, different things for many sort of different audiences. I've seen myself transform from a sloppy mobile phone to having a capture card and a really good camera. Yeah. And making networking meeting awesome people offline and it's just been a fantastic ride uh over a good 10 almost 11 year journey on oh, youtube wow. now yeah wow. and to be fair that's how we mainly got our friendship started was through a mutual friend but the majority of the time was actually f corresponding through your youtube channel and through other means like that in the comments section and through mm. social media i'd say that our friendship grew a little bit oh uh 
uh, as a result of the fact that you told me about your YouTube channel. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's excellent. So, yeah, they, I, I think it's a, a very interesting tool to be able to actually put yourself out there, uh, much mm -hmm. like what a podcast can do for people as well, as it gets mm -hmm. your opinions out there. It gets, uh, You can do it for entertainment. And because, actually, because but generally you gen, you love what you do and you love mm -hmm. what you're talking about. And that's, yeah. that's one of the joys that I have with doing a podcast. And I, I would imagine it's the same thing with you with YouTube. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's... <sighs> Because I just love, I think the problem with me, if I may get a bit personal with myself, I didn't really have that many, I'm careful on this word, friends growing up. Um, yeah. I did have no, like I the odd um, yeah. acquaintances yeah, yeah, yeah. and things yeah. like that, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you never anyone really that you call yeah. real friend. You had your yeah. people that you spoke to on a regular basis yeah. or the person yeah. that you would see in the town, you would say hello and have a quick chat yeah. with, but would never really hang out with. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah. had those growing up, and um, I just loved to talk about games. But some certain people I knew, they just... So I thought, okay. But the people that I knew when I was going through my teenage years, oh, of, gosh. Okay, after I left, after I lived in London and I moved, and um, started fresh elsewhere, that's when I became a YouTuber, I thought, I'd love to meet someone who I'd just talk about games with. That was my passion, and I yeah. wanted to become a games designer and things like that. And um, I thought, what, what else can I do in gaming, apart from just being a YouTuber? I want to go further. But, yeah, I've been doing this for quite a long time now, and I've actually forgotten what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was Don't basically worry. what I... made you want to join YouTube, and I think you have kind of answered that, to yeah. be fair, anyway. Yeah. So I, I, I wanted to get on to the next question about this. Because of the fact that you've been on the YouTube landscape for uh, about 11 years now, Yeah. Uh, or about 10 years, 10 to 11 years. Um, mm -hmm. How have you seen the changes in YouTube and especially their terms of service evolve over those years? Right. I remember when YouTube used to have some pretty naughty things on the site because mm -hmm. um, that was before yeah. they were owned by I Google. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I remember when you used to have your own background, your own YouTube. You can see oh, all your yeah. subscribers on the front page. I miss yeah. that it felt so personalized to me yeah um i've noticed with you i think they took away this you could rate a video out of five stars that was so early on yeah before the I like and dislike button came. i do remember the five star oh, yeah. rating as well wow yeah. i did i forgot that but yes that's right mm -hmm. and um i've noticed that at first youtube felt like this is a platform where anyone can make something of themselves. Mm -hmm. And that was like a genuine a genuine approach to it. Because I thought that for myself. I thought, okay, I can make something of myself. It may right. take a yeah. while, but I want right. to see how this works. Exactly. Yeah, because the original yeah, the original slogan for YouTube was and they still use it now, is broadcast yourself. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And I, I feel I mean, like some of that's changed over the years well, a lot Google now. Yeah. Them. <laughs> Yeah, we won't um, Google <laughs> overlords, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or ha hail Google, because they never put a foot wrong. <coughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Google Plus. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so it was, um, yeah, I noticed a lot of changes over the years. I feel like YouTube at first was like, well, it's like, you know, people like, I wasn't so big, but like people like James Rolfe, um, PewDiePie, yeah, right. and um, yeah. like all the others, old YouTubers who were yeah. at one point were big, but they've left. Mm -hmm. and well, things like that. Pew well, the Pewds is still there, but like you yeah. said, with something earlier on, is he had to evolve into a completely different stance to keep mm -hmm. himself from from fading into obscu obscurity. Yeah. And uh, James Rolfe obviously had Cinemassacre and other places that yeah. he could upload his content, but most of what he had was through YouTube. Yeah. So. Very true. Um, but it, it just it shows show that like there is a, an, a natural evolution of the platform itself, and yeah, uh, for better or worse. Yeah. What do you think? I'd actually agree with that. I mean, um, many YouTubers come and go. Um, some people have used the platform for. Um, positive and negative things. Some people 
I don't want to mention names, but some people use it to exploit people's deaths. People mm -hmm. just yep. yeah. gain all these subscribers. They treat yeah. their fans like rubbish. Yeah. They yeah. They get so popular that some some people let the fame get to their head, and some people just use it for all sorts of means where they can just get a little bit of a kick out of it and don't have to suffer the consequences that much. Mm -hmm. Other people who are trying so hard or try hard enough to actually just, you know, be genuine, be amazing at what they do, trying to be so either informative or entertaining mm -hmm. in a positive light. They sometimes they get swept under the rug most of the time and other people are yeah. just look giving people credit to people who are very questionable and very controversial. Right. It makes me why is this still going on? Why are people these people still today? Uh there's many YouTubers now that we can, that actually upload unnecessary content or questionable stuff that they still on the platform and think why have they got all this yeah i would have to agree with that there are some very questionable youtubers out there and mm -hmm. um there are some that put out some some absolutely superb content that feel mm -hmm. don't really get the uh due course that they deserve mm -hmm. because yeah. they're the ones that put all the time and the effort into their content whereas there might be someone who just literally poops a video out in five minutes and it'll get millions and millions of views yeah. yeah um i think those i tend to see those more as your kind of car crashes where people view them out of a uh, morbid curiosity oh yeah like um yeah. like like russian uh, road rage videos oh, gosh those are the best <laughs> they are very good <laughs> If Russia, you haven't checked those out, <laughs> so funny. They are so funny, they, honestly. They are. That is a tough people. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh. so I wanted to get on to um, a controversial topic here with yeah. YouTube. Uh, just so happens to be the 2012 ad apocalypse. Now, okay. apparently we're going through a third ad adpocalypse at yeah. the moment. Um, how would you say that uh, changed YouTube? Um, and, and there's a caveat to that question. Did it affect you in any way, really? I don't think it did. Um, I don't know. What is Adpocalypse again? Uh, the Adpocalypse was a, an incident that happened back in 2012 in relation to um, what uh, is mentioned on social media now as GG or Gamergate. Gamergate. Okay. You, I'm sure we've discussed the Gamergate scandal uh, a little bit. It's basically where um, after an incident had happened, a lot of advertisers got a bit worried about the kind of content they were putting their adverts on and mm -hmm. pulled their services away from YouTube. Okay. So it meant that a lot of content creators sort of got hit financially in a mm -hmm. big way right yeah uh, I, I was i was not in i was still uploading content at the time i don't think i was affected in any way shape or that's pretty lucky so that's good yeah um i how i mean okay so how do you feel as um I hate to use the moniker small youtuber because that's not what i mean but i mean in comparison to say jack um yeah uh how do you feel that advertising ha or do you feel that advertising has changed youtube's atmosphere i have noticed this with certain youtubers um see this is one of, one of the things i've noticed with youtube is like because i get this from commentary channels uh, mm -hmm. People who, uh, like, give their comments on a certain YouTuber and things that I've learned with only certain YouTubers when they make videos over 10 minutes, they can mm -hmm. advertise a lot of things or put many ads on their videos to get a lot more money or something like that. Yeah. I do feel like some people have used that to get a bit greedy with yeah. currency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel I like... I agree with that. What? Yeah. What was that? What, uh, what are I, you doing? I, I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, we're, we're agreeing here. Yeah, and um, oh no, I was on about um, yeah. like what you're doing as opposed to what's this YouTuber doing making yeah. a video yeah. just to oh, get yeah. across a 10 minute mark, yeah, just for the point of having more advertisements on it because certain people I can't name the new YouTubers, it's, uh, I can't do that. But some people, when I said earlier, people exploiting death, yeah, some people actually do that, 
And yeah, it's very they do. Like, Why yeah. are you putting so many advertisements on this, mm-hmm. and you're gaining money off someone else? Be- someone else's misfortune yes like someone's family member dies Ugh. and you're gaining a lot of money off it yeah mm-hmm. and yet when people call you out on it you act all defensive but you're doing the wrong you're in the wrong anyway by doing what you're doing so i feel yeah. like many not a lot but many youtubers have this sort of idea that they it's gotten to the point where they want money 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 on mm-hmm. youtube money not not for the ones who who earn it or who get to that point of actually having money that's great good good on them but mm-hmm. the ones who have a really discolored or negative view that mm-hmm. yeah i want that for greed you know i want all that yeah. give me that cash because that over youtube is over there has hundred thousand oh. to do that year yeah. yeah now do you think that that is a, as a result of the fact that youtube's algorithms will promote people uh based on the uh topic of which they are covering and if uh, someone's death is a uh, a hotly contested or spoken about topic, then they could just be teaming the algorithm basically for financial gain. I believe that's like a... Part of me wants to say yes, and part of me wants to say no to be on the fair side to pe- cover that topic out of genuine purposes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it does happen when people want to you know, use that algorithm side of things just to gain, 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 because, you know, they're going to get money and a lot of views from it and things. Mm. Now, I have to say I did notice that earlier on the year with uh, the YouTuber Etika, and I saw a lot of yeah. a lot of videos based around that with people who genuinely really didn't even know who he was. And yeah. I have to admit, yeah. I didn't know who he was really until his name was mentioned yeah. uh, in these discussions. So, yeah. I, I do believe that there are people out there who do exploit that sort of thing just for financial gain. And yeah. uh, you get a lot of people on social media generally who will use uh, like hashtags on Twitter to sort yeah, of that's... self-promote their views in that sort of respect. Yeah, yeah. Um, so <clears throat> It kind of also bleeds into uh, the Let's Players, which is the ones that I am obsessed with. Yeah. Um, Yep. But um, let's say a game comes out, uh, you know, Death Stranding even. Um, then suddenly... What is with you bashing on Death Stranding? <laughs> I just put that in there subtly. Um... <laughs> that was not subtle. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say it's a game like that, uh, that some of us may not be interested in watching um all yep. of the main let's players will be playing that game and it's kind of like oh, yes they each have their different spin on it and that's great but the content itself is very samey and they're all doing it for the same reason which is this will bring me money it will bring me views it will bring me money um, mm-hmm. whereas yeah. that's at the point where i usually just go from my mains and go find smaller youtubers to, to watch yeah Mm -hmm. so um obviously you follow quite a few small youtubers uh dr virtual you um you have a little community of people uh who all contribute videos towards a a larger goal so did you want to talk about them at all i can talk about like the press start family that is correct yes um so i was in i was invited to the press start family um I don't know how I got noticed. I think it's because I was networking out on Twitter, trying to find other YouTubers, like-minded YouTubers like myself, who just love what they're doing with gaming. Then I got invited to it, and I was like, yeah, okay, I'll join. And it was going really, really good. Um, With the smaller YouTuber community, I care about them because it's important for us to be noticed as well. Yeah. I feel like I've I've been in this mindset for ages now. I've not really spoke about it because I don't really want to rant on on one of my videos because I might get a bit too much, but that's the good thing about editing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I can talk about the uh, Press Start family, the community. So we started up a Discord, which I'm part of, and many of us joined. Um, we was all getting to know each other. I love that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I made a video about it as well. We, was, we were just individual YouTubers from UK, Car this side of the world, that side of the world, making content. Some of us have done collabs. I've done collabs with some, with uh, Ray Killam, TJ the Gamer, and 
my gaming mini interview series. I started with people from Press Start because they were the easiest to find, and I branch out a bit, you know, get to know other gamers. Yeah. And it was joining the Press Start family which really gave me the the eye opener of actually what a collaboration is with other YouTubers. I got a taste of that. I loved it. It's a really good way to give spotlight to other YouTubers, mm -hmm. people who don't YouTube, but they don't have much of a following. I thought, okay, yeah, given that over there. Press Start family it was just all of us YouTubers, many different lands, joining to one Discord. Some of us have left, but we're trying to try and rebuild the family. And we still keep in touch with each other. We're all good friends because we talk to each other nearly off every day. Yep. It's a really good small community that we've brought up together. And I feel really happy that I've been a part of something that I can actually make a contribution to. Hmm. That's really nice, actually, that when small YouTubers can sort of get together and have uh, discussions. I, I mean, I, I think it's great for anyone to be able to sit down and have discussions and share an interest and be able to produce content or even just generally just have a chat and just yeah. about things that interest you. And it's uh, it's great to see that you have included a lot of those people with with your channel because uh, I, I actually do feel that one of your strongest points is your collaboration videos. Yeah, I love that. I do really enjoy the fact that you uh, are spotlighting some of these YouTubers who should get more, and they are also Absolutely. spotlighting yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I, I, I always, I'm a big believer in the whole "you scratch my back, I scratch yours" type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah. that's very good to hear uh, about that going on. Mm. Oh yeah, it's um, been a really good help towards me in terms of me just having someone to speak to. Mm -hmm. just like you know we, we may be youtubers but also human beings we've got right. our daily lives and stuff and i'm always asking how how they are they always ask how i am things going and it's just like talking to some maybe across like a couple of thousand miles across the ocean but mm -hmm. you know it's good to have that communication you know to have someone to speak to you know yeah well we can tell you that for testament we're across a small pond here and we yeah. talk very regularly me and kylie you know even on air we do talk mm -hmm. about quite a lot of things which, mm -hmm. and had it not been for this podcast we wouldn't have uh we probably wouldn't have done uh been speaking as much as we did uh, yeah i no. don't think so um yeah because i'm not a very um communicative communicative person offline <laughs> and yeah. no you're quite hard to get hold of I at am, the best i am <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's fine so I think we have one last question here, and I think this is quite an interesting one. Okay. Um, did you have any advice for anyone who is considering doing YouTube either full-time or just as a hobby? Yeah, um, I can offer my sort of wisdom from my own experience, things that I do. And right, so I can start off with, if you want to, if you want to start being a YouTuber, have a plan. What sort of things are you interested in? What sort of things do you love talking about or you would really like to give a spotlight on that you feel is important, that you can make a change to someone, either your, yourself, your family, your f people you know don't know across the pond? Have a plan. Mm -hmm. Second, I would say do it because you love it. Don't do it because you want to have money. money. Don't do it. That will eventually come, depending on your content and how you make videos. Have the right equipment. I mean, I started out with nothing. I mean, but these days, you things have transformed in the world in terms of software apps and things. You can yeah, have this and that. So things have gotten a little bit easier since 10 years ago when I began. Oh, yeah. I can yeah. imagine. I mean, remember how expensive capture cards or capture oh, units yeah. were back in those yeah. days? Yeah. I mean, Big you time. could pick up a decent capture card nowadays if you wanted to do gaming for probably about £60 pre-owned yeah. or about yeah. $75 uh, American. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas these giant boxes, <laughs> like, years and yeah. years ago, they used to be about about three, four, maybe £500. Yeah. They were crazy. They really was... were. Yeah. Um, also, it's like... Um... Yeah, I think it's so. If you want to like do YouTube part time, just set yourself a nice little schedule that's around your time. Mm. If you want to do YouTube a uh, long go, long time, uh, pretty much have a plan. Yeah, I say be very careful. I mean, you're going to get your critics. You're going to mm -hmm. be mindful of people on the internet yeah. because that's a really dark pit to get involved in. Always be careful. Mm -hmm. Always expect the unexpected. 
and <laughs> yeah you have to just um be mindful of not only yourself but also your audience always think of your audience as well because you want to be the type of youtuber that is a good community engaging one it's one thing I can't stand with many YouTubers, not the ones that are super busy who have thousands and thousands of comments. It's the ones who they just ignore your comments or just ignore people of their platform. Yeah. And they just do it for themselves. Don't be the kind of YouTuber that people don't want to look to. Right. Be the kind of YouTuber that's inspiring. Be the one that's really people you can laugh with, people you can talk to, network with. Be someone who is approachable. Yeah. I would say actually that's a very strong suit of yours is you are very very uh, engaging with your audience you are yeah. always putting comments or replies to comments mm -hmm. oh absolutely it's um uh, thanks to this you new YouTube layout I've actually been going back to all the comments and just catching up on those and just to respond to them just so I thought ah because I wasn't notified about that so why wasn't I notified so I'm going to have to respond to that which happily yeah. I'm always happy to speak to my audience always because they give me views they take their time out of their day to watch my boring content as I'm having a laugh yeah. my content that's not really that important again another laugh um, <laughs> but I I really appreciate it when I when I tell them in my comments thank you for watching it's really appreciated I always show them respect i always show them that you are acknowledged your comment has been seen i'm responding thank you yeah. very i'm always thanking them yeah you know, it makes them feel good they may come back for more because partly what people love about me is how it's gen generally sincere and um approachable i am and how often i always talk back to my audience because i'm always asking them questions so i'm always... and another thing which i didn't actually mention about being a youtuber Always support others as well. Don't just yes. think about it yourself. Yeah. Always support other people. It's got to go both ways. Mm -hmm. It can't be unbalanced. Absolutely. Of course. Absolutely. And we would we would definitely agree with that because whilst we're not on YouTube, we are helping to support your channel by having you on and you're helping to support us by coming on here as well, which is so having a nice little collaborative effort to be able to try and grow some some listenership or some viewer bases for each person. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. So it's all about cooperation. Yes. Yeah. Mutual beneficial things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for that insightful piece of advice there, Kylie. <laughs> it's later than usual. I'm getting tired. Yeah, we're recording this a little bit later than we normally. Yeah. So fair enough. So um so I think that will cover us for the interview. So thank you very much for uh, yes. your amazing insight into what the YouTube landscape has been. Oh, my pleasure. You're welcome. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so we've actually got some listener questions. So can you, you want to stick around for some questions? Yeah, I can stick around, yeah. They're Wicked. Fun. <laughs> yeah, they're, we've got some pretty fun ones, actually. So uh, we'll, we'll start with the, uh, the shortest one first, which is uh, the one that was provided to us by at GamerDadJournal on Twitter, which happens to be Alex, one of our writers, which mm -hmm. is very nice of him. Woohoo, shout out. So, whoop, another one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what are your favorite video game related podcasts other than Rapid Reviews radio podcasts, of course? Uh, Doc, do you want to take this one first? Okay. Uh, favorite video game related podcasts? Yeah. Uh, what's this question sort of based on? Is it based on the YouTubers or doing it? Or... Uh, it could be anyone, really. Anyone who uploads some sort of uh, gaming podcast in any way, whether it be on YouTube or SoundCloud, Mixer, or wherever they do their podcasts. Um, well, for many years, I was watching um, the Hate Bid podcast, which featured... Um... Alpha Megacy and Razor Fist, Yell Chaos, and their yep. guests that they have on every now and again, like Kid Shoryuken or Ace Ali. Mm -hmm. I love the um, the fact that I just love hearing gaming opinions on games at the time, and news, and worked and things like that. Yeah. I like, I do like uh, people who are just genuinely funny. I love that. Yeah, and uh, that that can be insightful as well, and. That we can learn off of. I like things like that. Um, I don't really know how to answer this one. I have to keep that short and brief. Yeah. Now, 
obviously Alex has mentioned it in his question, but the the correct answer to that was Rapid Reviews Radio. Yeah. <laughs> we will deduct ten points. <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, no, we no, no, no. we we, we won't no, actually no, no. Like, say that. No, we we have got our own podcast that we do all enjoy mm-hmm. as well. So Kylie, yeah. it's uh, you're up to the plate. Um. Well. Um. There is a plethora of gaming content out there. Um, so I will I will do a shout out for one of our fellow, or a couple of our fellows, which is the Game Gaming FX uh, podcast. Um, yep, they're good. And then what I used to listen to was the Polygon stuff, and um, yeah. but they they change hands and content so often now um that i don't actually look forward like i used to yeah Um, i can i can sort of understand that yeah so mostly what i do is i I just i go to youtube and uh listen to a lot of the uh uploaders there that do uh, yeah you know their podcast via that way um and then it for me it's the usual very uh popular mostly known ones <laughs> of course yeah but i mean there say, there's some but... <laughs> there are some great great ones out there to be fair yeah um but i am going to plug uh well no cuz <laughs> i'm trying to think but they're all got like over a million subscribers and they really don't yeah. need my help so no i'm not gonna plug them i'm gonna okay. plug dr virtual's channel <laughs> yeah <laughs> Wait. yeah go there instead <laughs> yeah go and check out some of his content or yeah. all, all of his content go back and watch it all yes <laughs> yes and then, and then go back and watch it all again yes and make comments on every single one because he will <laughs> respond to every one of them. Oh, would yeah. indeed. <laughs> so, um, in terms of gaming-related podcasts, I've got a fair few that are on my regular um, uploads or on my regular schedule every week. So, um, one of them that was actually a recommendation for uh, for a podcast from one of our listeners, which I'm going to drop his name in here, was at Lamafluff42 because he Woo-hoo. is a good man. Um, he recommended a podcast called God is a Geek. Yes. Uh, yes. That is a very good podcast and they're a very good review outlet as well. And they are starting to really come up with prominence. Mm-hmm. They've done over 300 episodes, like, which wow. is utterly ridiculous. Wow. So, Can you imagine um, that? We're on eight. <laughs> Look, we're going to get there one day. We'll get we there are. one day. It will take us six yeah. years, but we'll yes. get there. We'll have a yeah. big giant cake. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, if we ever hit 100, we'll definitely. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to bake a cake and then send you a part of it, hoping that it doesn't go disgusting before then. <laughs> so, but a, a couple of others. I have mentioned one previously on a previous podcast, which was the Computer Game Show. They are. Yeah. Oh, gosh. They are the uh, four Brits who like to argue with each other, which is just <laughs> fun. Absolutely. Um, and a couple of others. Um, I believe one, this one doesn't need any sell, any promotion, but um, the Game Explained Real Talk podcast is also quite a good one. And uh, last recommendation, because I actually saw them at uh, EGX Res earlier on in the year. I didn't know anything about them until this point, but I felt that their, their live show that they did there was very engaging, very thoughtful. It's Big Red Barrel. Hmm. So there you go, some some podcasts to listen to in between listening to us yes, every week, of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, Kylie, do you want to take? Uh, do you want to pick a question and uh, sure. read it to us? Um, okay, this one comes to us by uh, our our dear friend of the show um, at Reviews by Hughes. Um, Ooh, yeah. Can I can I stop you there for one minute oh, because okay. I have to say one thing about yes. this yes um we received the news a couple of days ago that uh reviews by hughes or sean hughes Mm -hmm. is leaving at rapid reviews and i just wanted to say that he has been an absolute pleasure to work with in every respect and he will be sorely missed over over here so thank you for your question and thank you for your contribution over the 
over the um a year odd or so that i've been with you yeah. with rapid reviews and beyond because you were one of the first that actually mike was uh had mm -hmm. uh, on, on the team so you helped grow this site amazingly so your work hasn't gone unnoticed yeah absolutely i second all of that <laughs> um okay well his question is if you had i'm gonna read this yeah the, okay. the okay. question is a little bit unusual <laughs> if you had to lose a game genre forever what would it be and why alternatively if you could only ever play one genre from today onwards, what would it be? Oh, this is a really tough question, to be fair. So, uh, Doc, I'll let you take this one first. Well, okay. Um, it's got me thinking that as all the different <laughs> game genres. I see. So, if I had to lose a game genre forever, what would it be and why? Yeah, so if you had to pick a game genre that you didn't want to play ever again, basically. Right, the ones I'm not going to throw in there are platformers. Yeah, um, I'm not going to throw puzzlers in there because they have been quite good fun, good games to play. Yeah, because they get the brain work, and I like games that do that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I, let's see. I wouldn't really care much if it was the first person shooter genre. Ooh, oh, okay. <laughs> But I don't know if that would be my choice because they've been so there've been some fantastic FPSs throughout the years. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't know which else to throw. There's been but there's because a game has taken an evolutionary step with its genres. Um, it's been I like top downs. Oh, I like RTSs. Mm hmm. Um, real time strategies. That is for others. Mm -hmm. I like. That is a tough one. Yeah. Emma, Emma shall, I, shall we come back to you whilst you mull it over? Do you want to mull it over for a minute? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to, I'll take this one. So if I had to lose a game genre forever, I would either go with the looter shooter or the MOBA. Because, and the reason why is because I don't play either of those games, so it's an easy choice. <laughs> well... and alternatively, if I had to choose one genre to play from today onwards, mm. Kylie, you could ring that bell because it's going <laughs> to be fighting games. <laughs> Bingo! <laughs> so anyone who listens knows i love street fighter i love smash brothers and all that sort of thing smash brothers can technically be regarded as a fighting game kind mm -hmm. of but i could gladly play street fighter tekken uh king of fighters yeah. or fatal fury for days and yeah. be quite content so yeah i'd keep that one for sure and i mean i've got nothing against looter shooters in any way like borderlands destiny and all of that but I kind of suck at them, so I don't really care for them. Reasonable, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Okay, so, Kylie. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna get I'm gonna get uh, uh, hate for this, but uh, oh. FIFA, all the FIFA genre. Oh, <laughs> oh damn! I didn't actually think of sports games. Ah, oh. <laughs> uh, I would. Eradicated off the face of the earth, which is funny because I am, I actually love sports. I play sports and I love sports on yeah. the field. I just, no, not in my games. And Look, uh, <laughs> I, I like playing football, but I don't like to play a football simulator. No, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, I can get that. Yeah, and then. Of course, the only genre, if I had to play it, would be FPS. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> or RPGs. I, well, see, I thought of that. But yeah. Halo falls under FPS. Yes. And my game that I least like, again, I'm going to get hate for this, but I can't help it. It's my it's my likes and dislikes. I can't. Yep. I don't like Dark Souls. And so if I could only play action role-playing games, I would be stuck with 
Dark Souls and Fallout. Fair. But you know, okay. <laughs> yeah, you'd be you you definitely be happy being stuck with Fallout for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's true. I would just play New Vegas from here until eternity. <laughs> what are you talking about? You you already do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i guess my answer is actually action role-playing games <laughs> okay <laughs> cool so you've had time to think and you've had time yeah to think our answers it's i had one that's thing in my head right now probably mmos is this mm. the one to eat that i would actually delete yeah 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 um I, I... Yeah, I think I get my, with that. the biggest experience negatively has been me playing DC Universe, and oh. that game has eaten up so much of my money. Yeah, and many other people, mm. and it still is just a repeat performance, even after many updates, more content. It's mm -hmm. just money, 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 money. I can't stand pay pay to win yes. type games. I don't know if yes. that's a genre or not. So I'm, I would say pay to win games, yeah. but it's becoming yeah, it's one. Cool. Yeah, it's yeah. called Fortnite. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Mm, so I have to absolutely how about... agree with that. Yes. Yeah. How about one to keep that you had to play forever? <laughs> oh, so that's a pretty good one. I do like... Oh, I'm a sucker for platformer games. But I also... <laughs> yeah. I've I just, known I you a total platform. of one hour, and I, I figured you would say platformer. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. I just have to say platformers. I love them. Okay. Yeah, because I know, obviously, from our discussions that one of your favorite games is Banjo and Kazooie. So, oh, yeah. yes. There you go. Yeah. It doesn't Absolutely. it doesn't have to be a 2D one. It could just be any platformer. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Honestly, Great, I, could have, I could have very easily said platformers as well. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> but we'll, we won't go into that. Oh, no, no. <laughs> so, uh, Okay. I think I need to have words with Mike about this one. Or oh, <laughs> not 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 Overlord Mike, but the other Mike. Uh, yeah. So this comes courtesy at 2D Mike 3D on Twitter. Yeah. Okay, a nice wholesome question this week. This is where I have an a, an issue with this because this is not a wholesome question. <laughs> <laughs> so so you have to choose a video game hero and a video game villain to fight to the death. Who do you pick? Caveat: No Smash matchups. Now, do the same with movies. <laughs> Gosh darn no, it, no, Mike! Man. Like <laughs> now, this is a loaded question. It is. Am I to understand that yeah. the video game hero and the video game villain will fight to the death? Yes. Okay. Um, then I, I have, I have mine. <laughs> Uh, okay, oh, do you want to enlighten us with your choice? Sure. Um, well, Master Chief is the hero because duh. Standard. Um, and then the um, villain would be Lemmy, the um, the oh, Koopa's kid. Oh, okay. <laughs> why, why Lemmy? Why Lemmy? Because he's like the weakest one. <laughs> So it's basically going to be an easy fight for, yes. for Master Chief, so he would win. <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> I have to protect Master Chief if I'm in charge of these fights. <laughs> I, think he, I think he can protect himself. He has Second Amendment rights. He needs me! <laughs> Shall we come back to the movie one in a second? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Doc, what do you reckon? That's a tough one. I've got... No, that's too easy. I don't know if these this character is a villain or a, or a hero. Okay. I was going to say um, worms. Oh, worms now they can be both heroes yes. and villains. Yeah, that's right. You can make them fight each other. Yes! Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what I was going to pick. Them. Oh, that's brilliant! <laughs> That's why I pick worms. That's okay. excellent. What an excellent choice. Yes. I didn't ever think about that. I mean, it's not a smash matchup, so even better. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. oh, now, I think, 
I think I'm going to have to go for kind of an obvious choice here. Uh-huh. But I would love to see the two actually fight properly to the death. Mm-hmm. Ooh. And this is going to be weird because I'm going to mention two names for said villain. Um, so I want Sonic mm-hmm. and Eggman to fight to the death. So Because Eggman should not be named Eggman. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Rowe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ah, that would be yeah. that would be like Batman versus Joker. That that's Oh yeah, yeah, the the, the a... grudge match to yes, end all grudge matches. Yes. Yeah. I'd pay to watch that. <laughs> I I honestly just want to see Sonic just run around him in a circle saying, You're too slow. <laughs> ah. Uh okay, some movies. So we gotta do the same with a movie here. <sighs> what two movies do you want to fight to the death? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, <laughs> okay, so villain would be Dark Helmet from Spaceballs. Yes. And... What a legendary film that was. <laughs> yes, <Well>. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, was... Um, and then hero, uh, I'm gonna say Indiana Jones. <laughs> Ooh. That's really cool, actually. Yeah, I'd like to see that. I'd like, and Indy would win because he'd have to. Oh, of course. Rather than getting his whip out, he'd just get ill and just shoot someone instead. Yes. (laughs) Best scene of the movies ever. Yeah, which I absolutely love because of the fact that Harrison Ford Mm -hmm. was just too ill to do anything, so he just shot him. Yep. He was just like, he was just like, look, I'm sick. Can we just get this over with? And Steven Spielberg was like, yeah. And it was yeah. hilarious. It was yeah. great. Yeah, because he had really aggressive food poisoning, didn't <laughs> yeah. he? Yeah. Oh, that, was... <laughs> that was that take was done in between him throwing up. Yeah. Oh yeah. So <laughs> one of the just most brilliant, uh, just uh, comedic timing is just on yeah. point. Love it. All right. Yeah. So what about you two? Uh, who was that aimed at? Me or and both of any? Either one of you. Whichever okay. one's ready. Okay. Whichever one's ready. Doc, I'll let you take this. I need a, I need a minute. <laughs> okay. Um, villain, I'd say the T-800. Oof. Oh, so are we talking T-800 okay, from the first movie? It would have to be. Yeah, yeah, the first one. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah, point, yeah. good point. Oof. Yeah, but actually, to be fair, it is the T-800 because it's the T-850, actually, in the Terminator 2. Re- mm. Oh. Yeah, it's a slightly modified version of the I T-800. I guess yeah. so. Okay, very cool. And Robocop. Oh, wow. <laughs> awesome. Oh, that would be amazing. Oh, my gosh. Well, well, you do know Robocop would just get absolutely pumped full of lead with a, sh- with a shotgun well, yeah. and then just come back to life. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, wow. That would be great. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I think Robocop would have the advantage just before because of the amount and speed of firepower. Yeah, I, I would probably agree with that. It does have yeah. a lot of firepower. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, um, I'm going to choose a weird one here. Not a a really unusual one. <laughs> so, one of my favorite films I want is um a based on a Stephen King novel. So that's going to mm-hmm. give you a little bit of an example here. Right. So I want, in fact, both of them are going to be based on Stephen King novels. I want it. Mm-hmm. So Pennywise the clown, right? Yeah. Go up against Andy Dufresne. <laughs> I, I can't even picture that. <laughs> I've just blown your mind, haven't I? Oh my God. Oh, imagine that. Andy Dufresne <laughs> uses the special move crawl through sewage. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then and then Pennywise is like, we all float down here. <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> oh jeez. Oh jeez. Alright, well, um, Mike wins uh, again for For <laughs> uh, most unusual and yes. <laughs> Fatty, insane, crazy questions. 
Okay. Love it. Love, love that question. That was great. That was <laughs> we, we great. We do have to have a conversation about wholesome questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think our definitions might be a tad bit different. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. But then we've got this last, last question. One, yeah. Um, by another one of our uh, Rapid Reviews family, uh, which is at Wyatt L D E N 2. Yes. Um, what is a game <laughs> series now this is good this is good yeah. what's a game series that you haven't talked about yet or talked about very little that you want to talk about more <laughs> so that doesn't mean you can talk about anything Bethesda related highly no I'm Fallout, no Halo no Outer Worlds <laughs> yep is there anything else there are no other games no I'm kidding <laughs> there is for me there Go is ahead, a series yes. that I have there's a series that I have very very infrequently mentioned mm -hmm. and being a big 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 fan of Capcom games mm -hmm. Phoenix Wright oh and the Ace yes. Attorney series yes I love Ace Attorney objection in fact <laughs> overruled <laughs> <laughs> so I came into these games really really late actually um that i remember playing them on the 3ds uh, which mm -hmm. obviously you could play them on the ds through that way um so i managed to play through them uh quite rapidly um the first three games and absolutely loved the charm the art style the humor mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. most of all the music the music mm -hmm. is superb but absolutely. the stories around them are just absolutely wonderful as well. They are utterly insane, utterly ridiculous, but just so full of personality and so full of humor. It is just right up my street. And to be fair, um, if I was to ever cosplay, it would be as Phoenix Wright. I oh, want him excellent. in Smash, for goodness sakes. <laughs> Get him in Smash! I <laughs> in saw fact, the meme going around. <laughs> yeah. I I literally was a character loyalist on Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 that I had him as part of my team, even though he is the lowest ranked character <laughs> in the entire game. Oh, that is hilarious. That is that's true loyalty. <laughs> yeah, you've got to get good with the uh with the worst character in the game. I like it when I the mean, worst character turns out to be the strongest after you, you know, power them up and stuff in any and that's in any game. That's that's my favorite. And that's exactly how it is in um, Ultimate Marvel 3, that once you get him to his turnabout phase, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, yeah. he is destructive. I but it that. takes such a long time to get him there. <laughs> I, I just love the fact that he fights in that game without actually fighting. Uh -huh. So one of his moves is, uh, is a sneeze. Oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. That is great. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, I'll field the question to either of you two. So, who wants to take it? Um, well, I'm. I've. I've got one in my back pocket. Um, <laughs> Bring it to the front. Um, I shall do that with Viscera cleanup detail. I love that game. I love that game. If I'm not playing <laughs> New Vegas or <laughs> Outer Wilds yep. or Halo, then I'm playing uh, Viscera cleanup detail and. Um, it's just, I, I don't know if it's the whole progress thing that I love or yep. just because that is what you do. The whole quote game, if you can call it mm -hmm. that, I don't even know if it could be described as a game is you have a list of things to do and you do them. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Very objection based stuff is always usually quite fun to do, even yeah. if it is mundane. Well, yes. Of course, I do make up backstories in my head uh, as oh, I am cool. cleaning, you know, uh, viscera and blowed up bits <laughs> out of the air conditioners. <laughs> so... <laughs> oh, dear. That's a good choice, actually. That's a really good one. The, what is it that you love specifically about all of it? Is it like the music, the uh, the gameplay, just the, the um, utter it, absurdity it, of it? The absurdity. I love the absurdity. There is actually a storyline, a story mode, okay. well, storyline, um, but you have to put the pieces together to get it. Um, yeah. And it's very difficult. 
Um, but honestly, it's just that kind of zen of just cleaning and burning things. <laughs> <laughs> so we basically learned today that you love to clean your house through pyromania. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Throw it all in the I, fireplace. <laughs> I, I don't need a house. I'll burn it down. <laughs> It's not clean. It's not clean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Duck. Uh, is there a game that you have mentioned you haven't really spoken about a lot on your channel that you want to either do a review of or talk about a lot more? The Rayman series. Oh, hey, hey, there we go. Yes. We come circle. Yes. There is um that the first that was one of the games that I loved the PlayStation One. Mm. It was Ness music the sound effects the, the you get punched fish in the face and their teeth <laughs> it was great i love the, the majesty of the artwork and how it blended so well with the overall little bit of a story and all the uh, bosses every level was different from each other yeah. again the music would just captivate me it was just such a magical game yeah Absolutely. i would agree yeah 100%. Uh, especially I mean, Rayman Legends has got probably one of the most dynamic uh, soundtracks that I've mm -hmm. heard in a very long time. And the mm -hmm. fact that the, especially the music-based levels where you're rushing through and each punch actually forms part of the beat and stuff like that is just it's totally cool. incredible and really unique. Yeah. So, um, <sighs> and it's definitely the best thing to come out of France. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to any French <laughs> listeners. Uh, as an American, um, I would say it's a Statue of Liberty, but you know. <laughs> uh, okay, I can I can sympathize. I can sympathize. It is quite iconic, to be fair. Yeah. 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 yeah so that uh, looks like that uh, is nearly, yeah. I think that's nearly yeah, going to wrap us up uh, because we have actually got a few uh, little housekeeping things mm -hmm. to do at the end of the show. So uh, we actually have a competition running at the moment. We do, we do. Uh, which will close um, as of the seventh. So you will be hearing this uh, probably on the second or beyond. So you've got enough, just less than a week to get involved in our mm -hmm. competition to win a anchor power bank SD. Uh, 10,000 and the stipulation of the competition is best gaming related dad joke yes a real groaners moaners terrible cheesy oh my gosh I can't believe you said that <laughs> yeah the, yeah the, the, the most deplorably bad like bad gaming jokes that you've mm -hmm. got up your sleeve we want to hear them because they are terrible but great yes absolutely um and yeah. just uh be sure to get them to us uh and like i said it closes on the 7th right uh yes yeah, uh be the 7th of december at eleven fifty nine greenwich mean time <laughs> i have to put that in there for our uh That's true. Yan yankee doodle listeners yeah well the ones that aren't in northern ireland <laughs> yes i i did mean that too um, you, you don't count as a listener. You count as a host, a co-host. I, I, I listen. Okay, so... I fast forward through all of your parts and listen to mine. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, well, you literally just <laughs> listen to yourself and you no. fast forward through all of my nonsense. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> my stuff's the boring <laughs> bit. Um, <laughs> um, so, yes, if you're out and about on the web, you can find us at www.rapidreviewsuk.com or join us on uh, Twitter at Rapid Reviews UK and also our um, podcast Twitter <laughs> yep. at RR Radio Pod. And where can they find you? Both You've you. done it again. You've oh, actually no. done it again. <laughs> so the bingo card has hit again. <laughs> <laughs> Rapid Reviews UK Facebook page. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so Doc, every week she forgets about the Facebook page. And and yeah. The bad it thing has become is, a bit of a meme now. The bad thing is, I have the entire address of everything sitting right here in front of me, and I'm just going down, doot, 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 and just my yeah. brain just <laughs> on the Facebook one. 
I know. It's quite funny. I mean, Doc, you even have the document. You can see it there, but yeah, yeah. it skips yes, right over right. that to go to this brand spanking new Twitter that we have for the podcast. I get so excited about the new Twitter. <laughs> you got to quell that excitement for a few seconds just to remember that. But anyone playing at home will actually oh, enjoy gosh. that. There, you so. had to have got a blackout this week if you're playing bingo. <laughs> Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh. So they can find me on Twitter at Pete Beckett one And uh, where can they find you, Kylie? Uh, I am at Kylie Tagreet, which is just K-I-L-E-Y-T-E-H-G-R-E-E-T on Twitter. And what Classy. about... Yes. And what about you, Dr. Virtual? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Dr. Under slash, under slash Virtual, Twitter. Yeah perfect um, and uh uh what about your channel oh yes oh yes uh <laughs> that's the reason why you're on here you on your own youtube <laughs> oh, it's late <laughs> yeah. it is yeah I'm okay you, you can find me on uh youtube uh x the retroholic x i believe until i actually change that to dr virtual you can just search uh dr yeah. virtual and it should usually yeah. come up yeah that's how I found you. Um, but well, that but is... yeah, let's try and make sure that we, we can get uh, the the gaming doctor himself up to 500 subscribers oh, by yeah, the end great. of the year, maybe. That would be great for you, wouldn't it? Thank you very much. Yeah, I yeah. really appreciate that. I'd love to hit my um, milestone of 500 subs this oh, year. That would be great. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and just before we go, thank you, Doctor. Doc, for coming on and being a part of this uh, utter crazy nonsense that we we call of a podcast yes. here. Yes, we have enjoyed it. We have enjoyed your presence. <laughs> I've loved it. Thank you. It's my cup of tea being here. Ah, great. That's excellent. So we Look, usually what do we? You want to add it, something? It, <laughs> yeah, you can slag us off afterwards, but you know, <laughs> you don't have to humble brag here at all. You know, if you hated the content, then just tell us how it is. <laughs> <laughs> So every week now, it's new. <laughs> I'm so tired. Yep. Um, we close out the show with a little game fact. So yep. hit us so with that I game fact. Yeah, so I actually posed this to Kylie earlier. I asked her to pick one of two options. She picked option two. So option two has to do with destiny. Mm. So, yeah, we'll talk about Bungie for a minute, shall we? Okay. <laughs> Did you know that at the time of which the first Destiny game came out, the game cost 500 million to create and was therefore the most expensive game to produce at the time? Oh my gosh. That's yeah. insane. Wow. Thank you yeah. for joining us and we will see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.